I severely underestimated this update. <laughs> Hey you guys, Happy New Year! I know this is kind of the most delayed first video of the year for 2022, but um, your girl needed the break, okay? But we're back and we're bigger than ever. Welcome to a brand new set. I'm just totally kidding. This is my bedroom still, but it's just tilted by about 90 degrees. <laughs> While I was gone, however, we crossed 6,000 subscribers on this channel. So that is insane. Thank you so, so much for all of your love and support. I am so glad you enjoyed Style Study Month all through December. <laughs> But guess what? When I said I was on a break, it may not have been an actual proper break. Hi, I'm Swish and I'm a workaholic. So instead of just kicking back and watching a lot of Christmas movies, I went ahead and got myself a 2022 planner and I have gone ahead and planned the entire year's worth of content. And while this video hadn't been penciled in for today specifically, over the holidays, the open source Santa has gifted us all Critter 5.0. What would open source Santa be called? Father Holiday? Holidaddy? <laughs> anyway, like I said, the first video of the year was not supposed to be a Critter 5.0, but then someone requested it on the first Critter video, so um, I figured if that's not a sign, I don't know what is. So a massive thank you to Vokan Savos for requesting this video. You have single-handedly destroyed my entire year's content calendar. Nah, I'm totally kidding. Thank you so much for the request. Before we dive in, if you're new here, hello, welcome. I am so glad you're here. Make sure to subscribe if you're enjoy this video because there is clearly loads more where this came from. And if you guys are as hyped about this new update as I am and enjoy nerding out with me today then please engage with this video so drop it a like, drop it a comment, let me know what you think of it. Alrighty, let's take a look at Critter 5.0. So, as you guys know, I did my very first video about Critter back in May last year, and at the time I was still painting on Photoshop, but as the year went on and I gradually became more and more familiar with the software, I realised that I actually quite enjoy painting on Critter. For those of you who don't know, Critter is a free open source software that is very wildly underrated for how powerful it really is. What sold me on it, honestly, was the brush engine. It is so lightweight and so easy to use. At the same time, it is so powerful and versatile. Now, here's the thing. When I first started digitally painting back in 2016 with my first ever Wacom Intro's Draw, um, I actually started painting on Corel Painter. If you've ever used Corel Painter, you already know this, but that thing shreds your motherboard and your CPU and your RAM especially. So when I switched to Photoshop, while it was easier on my computer and way faster, I'm going to be honest, painting on Photoshop is literally just like pushing pixels around, which is fair enough. It's not supposed to be a painting software. But when I then tried out Critter, it almost felt too good to be true because it had the speed and functionality of Photoshop with the traditional art feel of Corel Painter. Essentially, painting on Critter feels like actually moving paint around on a physical canvas. I mention all of this history because switching to Critter is the one decision that made me kind of fall back in love with the actual process of painting rather than just pushing pixels around to kind of mimic the look of a painting. So when they said that there was a brand new update coming out for Critter, I was equal parts excited and terrified. Excited because how could they possibly make this any better, but also terrified because listen, I play The Sims 4 and every time EA drops an update to the base game, it just breaks the entire game. But that's just more trauma for me to heal on my own time, I guess. Anyway, let's take a look at the release notes. Thank you. 
There are some very visible improvements, but also there are some super important bits in the notes that weren't super obvious when I dove right into paint on the updated version. Now, if you've been on this channel, you know I'm a digital painter. I paint characters and I'm guessing so do most of you who are subscribed to this channel. So I want to start by looking at the updates to digital art specifically to see how they've improved the painting experience. I think the biggest update with Krita 5.0 has been with the smudge brush engine. Now the release note has a lot of technical jargon that tells you how every attribute of the smudge tool has been redone and how everything doesn't depend on everything else anymore and is kind of independent and configurable. Here's what my monkey brain understood. Smudge go fast, color go blend and smudge now has a bump map. The notes say that the color rate is now only affected by the opacity, meaning you can change the color rate without changing the smudge length. Here's what that means. The color rate is how much color the brush puts down as it smudges. Think of it as picking up a bit of diluted color on your brush, which you then use to blend what's already on the canvas. On Photoshop, you might think of this as the load on the mixer brush. Opacity is how opaque the entire brush is, right? So the more that the brush's effects are visible, the more color you'll see, hence opacity affects the color rate. Smudge length, however, is a measure of how far one part of the painting gets pushed into another. So if I have say white and blue halves on a square canvas, let's keep the opacity 100, get rid of the color rate so that there's no color added to the mix and isolate the smudge length function. And we're gonna smudge from the edge of the blue into the white so we can see what's happening. With a smudge length of 100, the entire length of the smudge is gonna have blue in it. If we lower it to 50%, the blue is only gonna go about half as far. And if we lower the smudge length to 25%, it's only gonna go about a quarter of the way. In the old critter, the color rate was dependent on the opacity of the brush and the smudge length. But in this new update, they've made it so that the smudge length doesn't really affect how much color the brush puts down before mixing it all up. Does that make sense? I hope it makes sense. A couple of other updates to the smudge brush is that you can now have bigger brushes and also have blending modes that apply to the smudge brush. But my other favorite update is that the smudge brush now has a bump map or paint thickness as they call it. It's basically a function where your smudge brushes now have some height information and you can give it actual paint texture. This took a bit of fiddling about to figure out properly, but I learned that this applies to predefined brush alphas which have transparency. Instead of an alpha mask, you apply a lightness mask to it and you can fiddle about with the brightness, but it has to have a lightness mask. You can then go into the paint thickness and tweak it and if you set the spacing quite low you get that perfect brush stroke. What does this mean in real terms? Well you know that annoying feeling where you have these beautiful painterly brush strokes but when you blend it flattens all of that beautiful texture. With paint thickness enabled you can add texture into the blending brush itself and that way you're not really losing it as much. Okay, that's all I have to say about the smudge brush engine. Let's take a look at some of the other important attributes in the release notes. The first thing I want to talk about is the preset resources. Now in Crystal 5.0, they said they've switched to using something called an SQLite database. Based on a very quick and very basic Google search, what I understand of this is that the SQLite database thing is kind of embedded in the end program, meaning that instead of loading up all of your resources at the very beginning when Crystal opens up, it can now just go find the resources when you need them. Them. So not only is resource management a lot quicker and a lot more flexible, but they claim that Krita will now start up a lot quicker. 
That last one had me a little suspicious because I didn't know if it did in fact start up a lot quicker. So I did what any normal person would do. I uninstalled Critter 5.0, reinstalled 4.4.7, which I believe is the last stable version of it. And I timed the startup for that, then uninstalled 4.4.7, reinstalled 5.0 and timed the startup time for that. Wait, what? Just to give both the softwares the best possible shot, I got rid of all of my preset bundles and made sure that no other program was running and slowing Critter down. And I'm gonna be honest, there were many mixed results. When I booted 4.4.7, which is the old Critter, it opened up in 10.16 seconds. Critter 5.0, on the other hand, booted up in 14.14 seconds. Now, I thought maybe it is just the initial boot for Critter 5.0 that is slowing it down. So I booted it a second time and it actually booted up in eight and a half seconds. The point I'm trying to make is that while Critter 5.0 may or may not boot fast, faster than the older version of Critter, it's not a significant difference. Obviously, it still boots up really, really quickly because 10 seconds is like no time at all. I should mention that before this, I was using the beta version of Critter 5.0, which took forever to open up, but that's understandable because it is very unstable and it's supposed to be unstable. So in comparison to that, Critter kind of boots up at warp speed for me now. Also, Critter 5.0 uses a brand new brush format with a .kpp extension, which is not backwards compatible. So what that means is that while your old brushes will open with a new critter, any brushes you save on the new critter will not open with an older version of it. I think the most practical upgrade that I'm most hype about is that you can now relocate your resources folder. In the older versions of Critter, when you imported a resource into the app itself, it would basically take all of those brushes and those bundles and make a copy of it and put it in a folder in your C drive and app data. It worked just fine and you know, you could find the resources exactly when you needed them and everything. But you know, I like to keep my C drive very light because let's face it, your girl needs the rendering power. So being able to switch all of my brushes, of which there are many, to a folder on a different drive and have them still perform just as well is pretty much the cherry on top of a delicious treat. Critter 5.0 apparently has better integration for resources from other software such as Photoshop, so of course I have to test it. I spent years collecting a massive fortune of Photoshop brushes and the very thought of manually converting every single one of them for a Critter brush makes me want to throw up. So let's go ahead and import some Photoshop brushes into Critter. I've got this particle brush set by Pixel Stains that I absolutely love, and I've already tried importing them before. One thing that kept happening though, was that sometimes when I imported more complex ABR files, Critter would just crash and nope out of it. Again, probably just my system rebelling, but let me know if yours did the same. But Critter has been crashing a lot more in general with the 5.0. And again, it's only really imported the brushes as alphas and I ended up having to manually configure the mechanics anyway, which is pretty much what I had to do with Critter 4. Maybe there are just integrations for other resource files that I don't use. You can now mask tag brushes, which is amazing for someone like me, because you know I like to have a very specific set of brushes and I really don't like to use that pop out palette. So if you go to the resource manager, you can control click a bunch of different brushes, then in the tag option, hit that plus sign and either assign a pre-existing tag or create a new one. This literally takes a fraction of the time it would otherwise take to individually tag each brush you love from the entire library. Another issue that they seem to have fixed this time around is the choppy gradients. Previously on Critter, a big problem with the gradients was that they were super choppy in that the gradation from one color to the next in a gradient wasn't very smooth. Now they've introduced something called a blue noise dither, which basically takes the blue noise from your gradient and offsets it just a little bit, creating the illusion of super smoothness. And the difference is remarkable. Here's a gradient without the dither. 
When you zoom in, do you see how each color has like a solid line at the edge? And here is the same gradient with the dither on. It's so much smoother. So that's going to be amazing, especially on your bigger paintings where you can see if the gradient is really choppy. There's a fair few UI improvements as well. They've brought back docker locking, meaning that when you lock your dockers, everything will stay exactly where you leave it. That is such a handy little tweak, cause let's be honest, you and I are control freaks who need their windows to stay exactly where they're supposed to be. You can now detach the brush editor into its own window, so when you make little tweaks to the brush, you don't have to keep opening that menu after each paint stroke. I kinda wish you could have that as a docker as well, but maybe that's something for the next update. You can also now record time lapses, which will take a picture of your canvas every few seconds. You can then export it within Critter, but I found that that took ages, and I much preferred exporting the video on an actual video editing software. However, be careful about the file sizes. I had Critter take a snapshot every second for five and a half minutes, but I decided to have it save the snapshots at the original 8K image size, and it saved 300 133 images which add up to a whopping 58.9 gigs of data so if you do use the time lapse function make sure you have critter save small individual screen grabs or you will run out of space but here's the time lapse that i sped up quite a bit some more important tweaks to Critter is that your transform previews now stay in the stack. Previously, when you transformed a layer in a stack of layers, it would lay the preview on top of all of the layers and then you kind of had to guess what it would look like underneath those layers. Now it transforms each layer in its actual position, so that's amazing for when you're working with precise alignment. You can now rotate rectangles and ellipses when you place them, which is absolutely something we didn't know we needed. So when you're putting your shape down, if you hold Ctrl and Alt and move the cursor around, the shape will rotate. And then you can just release the Ctrl and Alt and resize it. You can also now drag and drop colors from the palette onto the canvas and it will fill in the shape. So Critter is definitely coming for Procreate's brand. You can also filter layers by their names for all of you psychopaths who use a million layers and name every single one of them. You can also paste into the current layer, which wasn't something you could do in the previous version of Critter. You can reapply a filter that you just applied, which is actually something I used a lot in Photoshop without even realizing it. So say I've applied blur to one layer and I want to apply the same exact blur to another layer. Instead of having to go in and reset all of the parameters by hand, I can now just click on the new layer and select filter and repeat filter. That is all the painting updates, but I have to mention they've made loads of amazing new updates for animators and people who work with storyboards. Critter has a brand new storyboard toolkit where you can arrange a scene-by-scene -scene story and annotate each board and then export the whole thing as a PDF and such. They've redone animation with an improved timeline docker, better animation curves, clone frames, more rendering options, and the ability to import videos and GIFs as animation sequences. None of this makes any sense to me because I do not animate. I like my art the way I like my mental health. Peaceful, stable, and unmoving. I will leave a link to the full release notes down in the video description because there is so much more on there that I haven't been able to cover today. And like I said at the start of this video, you guys, when I realized that there was a new Critter coming out, I once again severely underestimated how big the update is going to be. But let's talk about the painting process in real terms because it's one thing to have brand new shiny features, a whole other ball game when it comes to whether these shiny features actually affect the painting experience. 
as you can see here, I have my usual workspace and I'm actually trying a different workflow today, starting with a random colored background, then switching to black and white and then bringing back the color. I'll tell you more about it next week, don't worry. But in terms of speed and color, I must say that the brush engines are doing really well. Nothing takes super long to render anymore and the instant previews for the transform function are actually pretty close to instant. The smudge brush is definitely a lot more intuitive and powerful and I'm definitely really enjoying the extra control. You know mama loves being in charge here. No, but I've actually genuinely been enjoying tweaking the brushes and such and I especially love the paint thickness function because now the blended out areas of my paintings don't have to look flat or overly airbrushed, which is awesome. I will be tweaking a bunch of my usual blender brushes to include that function now, and I'm super excited about that. And finally, let's talk a little bit about criticisms. Bear in mind, these come from the utmost love, and I know Critter is open source and programmers can only do so much with a limited budget, but I wanna tell you guys all of my thoughts, not just the happy sunshine and rainbow ones. So so yeah, here's some things that I struggled with even after the update. First of all, Critter is crashing a lot more. Critter has pretty much never crashed for me in any of the previous iterations, including the unstable beta, but these days when I use Critter 5.0, every time I try to do something a little complex or if I try to use a very big brush size, instead of taking a lot of time like it used to to produce the results, it just crashes, it just shuts down Critter. I don't know why it's happening, I don't know if they're gonna fix this, I don't know if it's just my computer or if some of you guys have been facing this as well but it's really annoying. I do still find the liquify function a little clunky which is something they didn't touch upon in the update anyway but what helped was a comment that I can't remember where I read it but someone said that you can make things quicker by selecting a small area to liquify and then using that liquify transform and you know what it does work in a pinch but again it is not comparable to photoshop and maybe it's not even as important to most critter users but your girl sometimes struggles with lens distortion, okay? And again, I do wish the brush settings pop out window could be a docker just so I could have it next to my brush presets rather than have it take up extra space in the window. I might have it open on my second monitor for now, but I know that most people don't like or use multiple screens. So it's just extra screen space being taken up by the pop out window. And my final request, and this is mostly just wishful thinking really, is some way to integrate the dynamics of external brushes. So for for instance, if I have a scatter brush in Photoshop that I love, it would be amazing if when I import it into Critter, it isn't just an alpha stamp, but rather keeps its size, angle, and shape jitter. That way I don't have to go through and manually adjust the dynamics. Maybe that one's just me being lazy, but you know, just something that would be super nice for people converting from other applications. All in all, I love the new update. There are so many little tweaks that improve the overall painting experience experience in both obvious and subtle ways. If any of you guys are using Critter 4, get the update. And if any of you guys use other painting softwares, please try Critter 5.0. I promise you there is so much to love. So there we go. I don't know if software updates are as exciting to you, but every time I find out that something has a new upgrade coming, it kind of gives me the same feeling as like dyeing your hair. It's the same old reliable, but it's like a completely new look and feel. Which of these updates are you most excited about? Let me know in the comments below because I'm really excited to see where your priorities lie with the painting software. Also, what do you guys think of this new setup? Um, today was kind of a review type video, so you got to see more of my face. Let me know if you enjoyed this format by giving this video a big thumbs up. And not to get too far ahead of myself, but next week's video is like nothing else we've done on this channel before. I'm super excited for you to see it, so make sure you don't miss it when it drops next week by hitting that subscribe button down below and the notification bell which will tell you when I drop it. Come say hi on socials, all of the links are below. I'm gonna try and be a lot better with Instagram this year. I know I kind of gave up last year, but hopefully this time 
time we have a plan and really quickly um if you'd like to support the channel directly then please come check out my patreon i put a lot more content on there than i do on here so i'll leave a link to that in the video description as well Alrighty, you guys with all of that said thank you so so much for hanging out and nerding out over crypto with me today i hope you've enjoyed it as much as i have and i'll see you next week with that super exciting video bye